Welcome to Mahatma Education Society's e-learning channel. This is the lecture 5 of a series of lectures on introduction to mechanical vibrations. The outline, we will have the recapitulation of last lecture and the continuation of vibration terminology. The recap, we have seen what is meant by the following terms, periodic motion, the motion in which the time taken for each cycle is constant. Time period is the time taken for completing one cycle. Frequency, they are of two types, one is circular and linear. We have a relation between the two, omega is equal to 2 pi f or f is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. Omega is called as the circular frequency, F is called as the linear frequency. Amplitude, it is the maximum displacement of the mass from the mean position in any cycle. Free or natural vibrations and force vibrations. So, once disturbed, the mass vibrates on its own due to its inherent properties. There is a conversion of energy from kinetic to potential and vice versa and it requires no external force so as to continue the vibrations. So, we denote the frequency by a suffix called as n to denote the natural. Four vibrations can be thought of vibrations where there is a presence of force, some excitation from outside which causes vibrations. So, in short I can say for free vibrations the external force is absent and in force vibrations some external force is present. Natural frequency again they are of two types one is damped and one is undamped. So, this is called as omega d this is called as omega n. Simple harmonic motion we have seen two definitions for this. The first of the definitions is the motion of the projection of a particle taken along the diameter of a circle when the particle itself moves along the circumference with uniform speed motion. And the second definition is the motion in which the acceleration tends to be acting in the direction of the mean. Degrees of freedom, it is a minimum number of independent coordinates required to specify the motion of the masses. Aperiodic motion, the A indicates the negative prefix and it in indicates that there is not a single cycle of oscillation taking place and this is with reference to systems where there is very high level of damping or medium level of damping, right. So, when there is no time period at all, there is no frequency and hence we are relating to a periodic motion. Mode, whenever there is a resonance, then the configuration attained by the body is called as mode. Node is that position in the system where there is no deformation. Fundamental mode of vibration or basic mode of vibration, this corresponds to the first natural frequency and it is the most important of all the modes. Then we addressed this particular question, why only a first few modes or natural frequencies are studied by a designer. So, we had seen two reasons for that, one is practically the input frequency or the motor frequency is limited. So, the number of possible resonances when omega matches with any one of the omega ends is limited. The second reason we saw was uh, for higher frequencies the amplitudes are generally very small leading to very small deformations of the flexible members and hence there is a less chance of failure due to stresses exceeding the limits. Now, we continue with the vibration terminology. 
steady state and transient vibrations. So, steady state vibrations are those where the amplitude in each cycle remains same and transient vibrations are those where the amplitudes die out after a period of time. So, it is A 1, A 2, A 3 and it changes with time. Now, we have seen what is meant by degree of freedom. Degree of freedom is the minimum number of independent coordinates required so as to describe the motion of each and every mass in the system. Now, we have the types of masses as lumped mass or discrete masses and continuous or distributed mass. So, lumped mass is defined by a rigid mass. So, the motion of each and every particle in the mass will be described by the motion of only one point that is the center of gravity. And by applying some force, there will be no deformation as such to the lumped mass. The distance between any two points will not change even after application of the force. But if I talk about a flexible member, this can be an elastic member, for example, cantilever beam. So, after application of the force, let us say that the beam bends something like this. You take any two points and before application of force, this distance between the two points will change after the force is applied because there is a deformation. right? So, what is the degrees of freedom for this lumped mass and flexible mass? So, for this lumped mass, it is only 1. I can count this number of degrees of freedom, but what is the degrees of freedom for a continuous or a distributed mass? So, practically it is infinite. I can break this mass into a number of very, very small discrete masses or lumped mass and each of them connected to the other ones by means of spring and damper elements. So, because this system is very, very complex to solve. So, why complex? Because I can create a FVD for each and every mass and I get a differential equation for each lumped mass over here. Right, number of differential equations goes to infinite and to get the solution of this entire system requires the solution of all the equations and it becomes very, very complex. So, what we do as engineers, we try to simplify the problem. The given continuous system will be modeled in terms of discrete number of lumped parameter systems or lumped masses and then we solve for this. So, solving this uh, finite number of degree of freedom systems is comparatively easy. So, this relation is very important. Degrees of freedom is equal to the number of masses separated by elastic springs. So, we had seen one uh, example earlier, something like this. So, if I ask the question what is the number of degrees of freedom for this, then x 1 and x 2 they are not related because I am having a elastic member between them, but x 2 and x 3 can be related both are same and I can have only one coordinate over here. So, basically it is a two degree of freedom systems, free system right that is also equal to number of independent displacements. So, x 1 and x 2 they are independent is also equal to number of modes of vibration. I, I have that many number of natural frequencies right? and if I draw F V D for each of these, this one and this one separately, I get that many differential equations. Okay. That is it. Uh, this completes the vibration terminology. Hope you have understood the contents. Thank you. Happy learning.